Shake Table Lab by Finn, Gavin, and Kyle. At the beginning of the project, we had to make a sketch that had to be approved by Mr. C before we started building. There was a building code that the first floor had to be 18 centimeters and the second one also had to be 18 centimeters. To make our structure stronger, we latched the uprisings to the cardboard. This helped make our structure strong on the sides and very sturdy on the uprisings. We put in a lot of support in the middle of our structure so that it would stay strong when the shaking was happening. My group and I wanted our structure to be very sturdy for success. The straws in the middle also strung the structure all together by piping it through the middle. The crosses are very important to our structure because there are a lot of triangles in the X formation. They provide a lot of stability to support our structure. We put in the floors so then we could hold sandbags. Kyle, Gavin, and I are almost done in the photo here. We just put in the flooring. Some of the days we would come into class and Mr. C would give us new building requirements, like making a roof. At the end of our process, we had a total height of 36 inches of our tower. That was the highest in the whole entire grade. After your tower was done, you had to see if your tower could hold any weight. This was called a static test. Our tower could hold the weight very well. Together we strengthened our tower by latching tape to the base of our tower so that the tower would not sway in motion. We also used tape to connect the straws so that they were longer. Tape was the way that we connected everything. The strongest part of my tower was the base. We had X's in between the straws going up. The st other strongest part was the uprisings because we tripled the amount of straws that we used on the uprisings. The weakest part is the second floor because we are trying to save straws so we did a different method. It was not as strong as the X method because on the X method you had four triangles. On this other method you had three triangles. Four triangles is a lot more sturdy than three. My group and I used a lot of tape to connect the straws so that they were longer to make it so that they could connect uprising to uprising. We also used a lot of tape to attach the tower to the base of the tower so that it would not sway in motion. The additional supplies we got to build our tower was extra straws so we can make a roof. We also got extra straws so then we could attach our base to a cardboard platform. When we were testing our tower we had to keep on adding weight to see how much weight our tower could hold. We started off with four sandbags and in this video we have up to 14 sandbags. This is where our tower collapsed. We were able to hold 20 sandbags and then it collapsed. We were very upset about this because we thought we could hold more than that because we wanted to get the highest in the grade, but we ended up in fourth place. Our tower held 18 sandbags, so that meant we had a lot of readings for our tower. The lines on the graph show the z-axis, which is up and down, the y-axis, which is side to side, and the bottom one is forwards and backwards. Our tower was able to hold a successful 18 sandbags. We are very proud of this because this was the most amount in our class. Our building failed in the bottom left front corner. We are very upset about this because we should have added more tape. 
If I were to do this again, I would add more tape to the bottom because that's where our tower went wrong. We did not have it stabled enough so that it broke and snapped in half. I learned that is a I learned that it's really hard to make a building that is earthquake proof because buildings have to be very stable to survive an earthquake. Earthquakes are very powerful and can knock down buildings, so you have to have a great structural design to make it last. I really liked working with my group throughout the process. They are very great team workers and they contributed a lot to the process. I also liked the scientific part, which was making a tower and testing it on an earthquake. I learned a lot about earthquakes in this process. My group's building held 18 sandbags. We thought of this as an achievement because it was the greatest amount in our class. When I watched my tower, I saw that it failed at the bottom left corner where there are three straws. I think it failed because when it was swaying side to side, the force made the straws crack or snap. I would have added extra straws to support the sides since that is what made our tower fail. I learned that in order to make a good building, you need to make sure everything is secure before you can say you are finished. I enjoyed that we got to work with our friends while making a science experiment. I also thought that this was a fun project to test out our building skills. My group is very proud because our building held 18 sandbags. That is the most in our class. Our building failed in the bottom left corner because we did not add enough tape. The changes that we could have made to make our tower stronger is to add more cross beams and to make sure that tape was secure. Things that I learned about making an earthquake proof building is that it is very hard because the earthquakes are very strong. The things I enjoyed about this lab would be working with my friends in building the structure.